You know why you are violent? Very well. You haven't got to spend years trying to find out the cause of your violence, which is such a waste of time. But to observe violence as it is, without the censor, who then separates himself from the fact that he is wild. Are we meeting each other? Are we communicating with each other? I'm not sure. Look, sirs, this is really very important to understand. So let's go into a little more. Let's suppose I am violent. Anger, jealousy, brutality, driving ambition that brings about competition. And I'm always measuring myself against somebody else. And this comparison makes me feel I'm inferior to you who are superior. So there is a battle. Violence. I know all that. Then I say to myself, I must get rid of this. I, w I want to live at peace. Though I have lived for thousands and thousands of years as a human being, there must be a change. There must be change in society. How rotten it is, and it is. So I'll plunge into social work and therefore just forget myself. And the social work and the society is me. So I'm escaping my, from myself and realizing all the tricks the mind plays upon itself. I, now I look at myself, I'm violent. And how do I look on, my, on that violence? As a, a censor who condemns violence or justifies violence or one who is not capable of dealing with that violence therefore escapes from it? How do, I, how do I look at myself, look at that violence? Please do it. Are you looking at it as an observer who is different from violence? The observer who is separate, who condemns, justifies, and says, this is right, this is... And so, the observer looks at the violence, separates himself from violence, and condemns it. Or is the observer the observed? The following? The observer recognizes violence and separates himself in order to do something about it. But this separation is, for, is one of the tricks of thought. So the observer is the observed, is the violence. 
so long as there is a division between the observer and the observed, there must be violence. Right? So when I realize that, not verbally, realize with my heart, with my mind, with my whole being, then what takes place? You understand my question? You know, when you observe anything, there is always not only a physical separation, distance, space, there is also the desire to identify yourself with that which is beautiful, noble, and not identify yourself with that which is not. So identification is part of the trick. Of a mind that has separated itself as the sensor and is now trying to identify. But whereas when the observer becomes aware that he is part of the observed, and he is, and therefore no image between the observer and the observed, then you will find <coughs> that conflict completely comes to an end. This is real meditation, this is not just a trick. Therefore, it's very important, imperative, that one understand oneself deeply, understand all the responses the conditioning, the various temperaments, char characteristics, tendencies, just to watch without the observer. You get, we are meeting now to observe without the observer. And that is the act of learning. And so that's the act, that is the action. Now, there is a, a difficulty in this. One is observing oneself. One wants to learn about oneself. The more you discover, the more you understand, the greater the freedom. I'm using the word more purposely for the moment. The more is a comparative evaluation. I want to understand myself learn about myself. In observing myself, please do this as your as speaker is going into it, do it actually, don't take it home and think about it, do it now. Not this is not a group therapy or a confession or all that nonsense, hmm? but watch yourself as we 